All right, so we're here at the Alaska Sea Life Center for another uh, Telequarium program. But once again, if you, were, if you were here last week, we're doing another hashtag today besides just hashtag Telequarium. Uh, we're going to be doing hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch. So what, what are we doing today? Yeah, so Sunday Fish Sketch was a hashtag started on Twitter by Renee Martin. She has a cool account, so make sure to check her out. But she started this hashtag where every Sunday, or well, actually the themes come out on Friday, but every Friday we get a theme for a fish to draw. And this week's theme is we're actually supposed to draw larval or juvenile fish. So some larval fish, or well, they're like juvenile fish now, that we have here at the Sea Life Center are our little salmon. So we're here in front of our salmon fry tank, which is what we call our juvenile salmon. Yeah, so yeah, of course salmon, uh, Alaska's got a lot of them. We're kind of known for it. Um, what we have behind us right here are coho, but there are five types up here in Alaska that, uh, that we, we may go over as we're sketching. Um, but they have kind of a, a cool life cycle because they go from egg, which is where we'll be beginning, uh, all the way through several stages before they get to adult. But the important thing here, or the really interesting thing with salmon, is that they start in freshwater, they go out to saltwater, and then at the end of their life they come back to freshwater. So their body undergoes some crazy changes to accommodate for that. Um, now we're not going to do all of the life cycle today. We might show a, a, a sketch that Haley put together earlier. Um, but we're just going to do kind of the, the first, first few steps. And we want you to follow along. You can, you can try to follow along, do salmon with us, um, or if you have another fish that you can think of, the juvenile stage, maybe what it looks like, maybe you've got a tank at home. Uh, growing up, I had guppies in a tank at one point, and whenever they had babies, the babies were like tiny, 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 and we actually had a separate little net that you kind of hung over the edge of the tank. But baby guppies, I would just draw like a, a piece of rice with fins on it, basically. <laughs> uh, they were really small. So we encourage you to follow along with us as we talk about salmon, we're going to be drawing the first three stages of their life cycle. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see what we have. And we hope you are following along and you can share what you have with us. Uh, you can do that by posting it on Twitter with the hashtag SundayFishSketch and also use the hashtag Telequarium. And that way we know uh, which ones were people that followed along with us. But we'll get started. Like I mentioned, uh, salmon are a fish that start uh, from an egg. So what we have over here is kind of once they hatch out, once they grow up a little bit, this is actually our third stage in that we're going to be talking about. Um, but the, the salmon have to dig a nest, the adult salmon do. And they actually lay the eggs in there. So the female will lay the eggs, the male comes on over and fertilizes that. And these fish uh, breed at the end of their life. They actually die shortly after breeding. Um, and it's kind of sad, but at the same time, it's just a really cool life cycle coming to a conclusion. Uh, and the nests that they dig are called reds. And so I think we have a couple photos of salmon eggs that we can put up. Um, there's two stages sometimes here that people recognize differently, and that's the eggs and that's the eyed eggs. So eyed, E-Y-E-D, egg, all that means is that the, the salmon egg uh, has developed far enough along, the, the, the fish inside has developed far enough that you can actually see the eyes through the wall of the egg. So I'm gonna get started here. I'm just gonna draw, um, eggs. They're really easy. Yeah. Just circles. They're just circles. Little circles, little spheres. Now are you putting eyes in your eggs? Or I'm, I'm putting a couple eyed eggs. I'm doing some that aren't eyed yet and some that are. Okay. So mixing it up a little bit. Now salmon face a lot of challenges as they're uh, working their way back upstream. Yeah. There's uh, humans trying to catch them first of all. Then there's things like uh, bears. eagles, bears, <laughs> right? Like lots of stuff eats these salmon. So they have to get through a whole gauntlet um, they have to have enough energy to swim upstream for miles and miles and miles, uh, attempting to get to these good nesting areas. And sometimes that's still not enough. You know, if, if they lay their eggs, um, something could happen to those eggs where they may never hatch. One of the issues uh, that faces salmon is uh, stream uh, degradation or stream erosion um, or just changes to the stream that can make that water uh, inhospitable to, um, to the salmon. And so they need kind of the right conditions. They need gravel to dig their nests, to dig their reds. Uh, and if it's too silty, or if silt is introduced to the stream, uh, nearby construction projects, shore erosion, those sorts of things can introduce this uh, layer of silt or mud. And if that covers the eggs, the eggs can actually uh, drown basically in the mud or, or uh, be smothered. Yeah. So, so there, there's a lot of challenges. 
Now I'm just drawing the eggs. Are you? Are you? I'm just drawing some eggs. Are you going to cover them? All right. right I think I'm going to do. I'm going to do some eyed eggs here. My okay. salmon are getting kind of far along. <laughs> now, of course, not all fish lay eggs. Um, we're that's doing true. eggs here, but uh, our rockfish here at the Sea Life Center, that's an example of a fish that doesn't, doesn't lay those eggs. Um, when we're thinking about um, like our yellow eye rockfish, for example, they give birth to the babies once they've actually hatched out. So they're giving live birth to little, little babies. Um, again, smaller than a piece of rice, really. They're pretty tiny because they can also give birth to millions of them at one time yeah. uh, since they're so small. Yeah, they definitely have the lots of baby strategy and then hopefully some of them live. <laughs> yeah, and they don't, they don't really get taken care of mm -hmm. by uh, the parents, not in the fish we're discussing. There are fish that take care of them. Um, yeah. And in fact, uh, we have a fish here that lays eggs are kelp greenlings. They're really territorial. If you've been watching, actually, if you've been watching our all-day tank stream over on our YouTube channel, um, we have been looking at the bird tank, and that bird tank has a couple kelp greenlings in it, and they, you may have seen, are chasing each other around every once in a while. And that's because they have some little clutches of eggs that they are guarding, and if another fish kind of gets too close to that clutch, they'll chase them off. So some fish do take care of eggs, but in the case of our salmon, they lay those eggs, and like I said, they, they pass away shortly after. Yeah. Um, they do kind of try to cover them up a little bit with gravel, so those eggs do get covered up a bit to just kind of keep them hidden, keep them in place. You don't want the current just carrying them away. So I'm actually doing kind of a side view. I've got um, some like uh, a little dugout area on the bottom, and then I've got some little gravel up on top of the eggs. Oh, nice. Got a nice little red here. So of course those salmon eventually do hatch out of the eggs. Yep. And that's going to take us to our next stage. I don't know, are you ready over there for the next I'm ready stage? I'm for the next one. I yeah. mean, we can only draw circles for so long, I, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so those are our eggs. Uh, and then I am going to kind of draw a little arrow on over. Mm -hmm. And we're going to move on to the uh, Alvin, Alvin. Uh, which is spelled A-L-E-V-I-N. So Alvin are interesting. They're about as close to, to like a larval form as you might think with these salmon. They hatch out of the egg and they still have the yolk yeah. uh, sort of like distended from yeah. their stomach. Um, <laughs> Just looks like a big pouch. Like a big pouch. We've got some pictures of these that we can toss up uh, if you're not seeing those already. And honestly, these ones remind me the most of guppies um, yeah. because they're, they're really long and skinny. And they kind of got that transparent body like you can see. Yeah. All their structures starting to form in there. So trying to draw that, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking you got to get that really long, skinny body in there. Yeah, basically their body is just kind of like a grain of rice, like you were talking about earlier. Yeah, and then they've got that uh, distended yolk. If you, if you see that image, that, that kind of red uh, area that's off their, off their stomach, uh, that's the yolk. So that's actually left over from the egg, and they will carry that around for a brief while and still absorb nutrients from it. Uh, and so once they're done with that, that's when they actually require uh, nutrients in their, in their surroundings. So that's another sort of thing that you have to account for with streams as to whether it's healthy for salmon or not, is once those eggs hatch out, are they going to have food uh, once, once their yolk gets used up? Yeah. And what would our salmon be eating? What are, we, what are you thinking our salmon are going for? Well, at this point, they're probably eating like tiny little worms, yeah. things they can find in the stream beds, because they're not really going out to the ocean yet at this point. So they're tr probably trying to find maybe small insects and stuff too. Yeah, so we'd call them uh, macro invertebrates, yeah. right? Which, mm -hmm. so macro there is uh, large. Although in my head, I always think of macro as like not quite micro, right? It's got an A instead of an I, because they're still often small. Yeah. When we talk about macroinvertebrates, we're thinking of small things. Um, but they're big enough to see without a microscope, and that's what's important here. So you're right, they're right. eating worms, uh, larval insects, a lot of larval insects. If you think of dragonflies, mayflies, uh, a lot of times those are uh, aquatic when they're larval. Absolutely. I'm not quite happy with my... Uh, my Alvin over here. I'm not going to work it on mine. He's he's okay. Mine are mine are pretty goofy. That's okay. They're kind of goofy looking at this stage. Yeah. They and don't it, really look like fish. No, and it doesn't it doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. we're just doing Sunday fish sketch every week. We're going to try and bring it to you uh, through our tele program here. And if you if you can't draw that well, that's fine. 
if you have someone in your household who wants to sort of participate, uh, especially today, we're doing salmon. We actually tossed a link down in the description for a coloring book yeah. uh, that the Alaska Department of Fish and Game uh, has here. Um, and it, it's pretty fun. It's a salmon life cycle. You can actually learn the five salmon. So, Haley, do you remember? Oh, gosh. All you guys right. taught me this. Okay. All right. Hold this on. Gonna, if it's going to be your a hand, test of how Alaskan am I now. Right. Five <laughs> salmon. So, I'll start with the thumb, okay. which rhymes with... Chum. 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 So the chum salmon. salmon. And you can say that, uh, like, you know, if you've ever heard man's best friend or, or a human's best chum is a dog. These are also called dog salmon. So chum salmon or dog salmon. Yep. What do you remember about the pointer finger? Uh, what, what can I use that pointer finger for? Maybe two. Oh, if you wanted to poke somebody in the if you, eye. If you were going to sock someone right in the eye. <laughs> I was like pointing. You could use uh, the, your, your sockeye finger, right? That's the one right. you use. So that's the sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon. Then we've got, uh, and it would also, once you socked them in the eye, that eye would probably turn pretty red. Yeah. So those are our red salmon. Red salmon. Or they, they come up and they're, they're very red as well uh, towards the end of their life. Yep. Uh, then we've got our tallest finger here, our middle finger. Mm -hmm. It uh, is above the rest raining out. That's your king salmon. Uh, or also Chinook salmon. And then you've got this finger. Uh, if you're married, or maybe if you just wear some jewelry, you can have a ring on that salmon. Uh, and that ring could, or on that finger. <laughs> Don't put rings on your salmon, please. But no. <laughs> oftentimes that ring could be silver. So those are your silver, silver salmon. salmon. Uh, or our coho salmon, like we've got here. And then finally you got your pinky. Yep. You remember the pinky? Yeah, they're pink salmon. They're pink salmon. It's an easy one. And if, you, if you're like fancy, if you're drinking tea, you got your, your finger out, you can have it out straight <laughs> out. Or maybe it's like, ugh, it's a little bent. It's a little humpy. <laughs> and so uh, pink salmon are also humpy salmon. So those are your five types of salmon. And again, those are in the coloring book. If you, if you just don't think you've got it in you to draw some salmon today, maybe uh, get that coloring book, print that out, color some salmon, and slap that up with Sunday Fish Sketch. I think that's fine. Yeah. But be sure you have the hashtag Telequarium in there. Uh, so we know. All right, I've got a couple Alvin here. Okay. They're not great. I think my Alvin's pretty good. We're probably good to move on to our next stage. Yeah. If anyone's got any questions, by the way, you can toss those in uh, in the chat there. If you're watching along on Facebook, uh, we actually do these programs twice a day on our YouTube channel. Today's just kind of a special day. We're putting it on both. Uh, if you're on YouTube, hey, hang around for two more hours because we're actually going to be talking about walrus. Haley's got a fun little presentation about those a bit later oh, yeah. on. So uh, 12 and 2 every day Alaska time, uh, which is 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, Pacific time on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com uh, slash AKC Life Center. Uh, and that'll get you to our YouTube channel. All right, so our third stage. What's our third, third stage here? Third stage Harry? is fry. Fry. So that's the little guys we have behind us. These yep. coho are currently in their fry stage. So they're more looking like fish, but maybe not quite what you would typically think of as salmon. Yeah. yeah. Pretty little. Pretty little. They wouldn't be like a, 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 a big meal if you caught one. No. No. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> or like serving sized. Yeah. And one of the things they start doing at this point uh, is they're developing these little lines along mm -hmm. the side. Uh, what can you tell us about the, the weird banding that they have? Well, they do exhibit counter shading, which is a common camouflage pattern in a lot of fish. So they're darker on top. So mm -hmm. if predators are looking at them from above, hopefully they can't see them because they're going to blend in with the dark ocean floor. Yep. And they're lighter, typically on the bottom. These guys will start to get more light on the bottom as they grow older. But that's so if there's predators from below looking at them when they look up, they're hopefully not going to see them because they're kind of blending in with the light coming into the water from above. Yeah. So they kind of have that pattern. The banding could also help them if they're going through like grass, maybe like this little grass on the bottom kind of might help them blend into their surroundings a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's like vertical bars, almost yeah. like the vertical grass. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the point in the salmon's life cycle where they will start working their way down river. Uh, as they're becoming more uh, of an adult uh, fry, they'll work their way down river, and eventually they get to uh, like the, the, the mouth of the river, an estuary, um, and there's a lot of grass there. So these bands will help them even going forward in their life into the next stage, which maybe we'll talk about a little later on. But let's get our fry drawn here. Yeah. Oh, this fry. is like where they actually start looking more, They're actually like more fish like. Yeah. And here at the Sea Life Center, we have some cool tanks. This is our fry tank right here. But then we actually will, as our salmon get older, 
we'll put them in a couple of different tanks and gradually adjust them to salt water. Yeah. So we have um, like a stream tank and then we have an estuary tank, which is like part salt water, part fresh water, and eventually they'll be in a full salt water tank. Yes. So, so we do actually do that. And you may have seen, uh, we had a video not too long ago of Leo, our aquarist, yeah. feeding the salmon. Uh, so you can go on back uh, through our old videos and find that if you're interested. But basically he worked his way from the fresh water uh, to the brackish water where we're starting to mix in that salt uh, and then all the way on to uh, our saltwater tank where the adults live. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know about their tails. Their tails are kind of throwing me for a loop here. Their tails are interesting at this point because I feel like when they're more of adults, yeah. their tails are less forked. Yes. But in the fry stage, they're, they're definitely more forked. And what I mean by that is they're kind of like separated into two different parts instead of just being like a trapezoid shape. Yeah, they've got little lobes. It's mm -hmm. almost like a, like a weirdly squashed Mickey Mouse ears or something like <laughs> yeah. that, right? Yeah. All right. They are starting to get nicely defined fins at this point. Now we've got some pictures of Fry. Uh, I'm sure you've seen one already, but maybe we can slap that up for a little while. Um, just as a reference, if you are trying to follow along, yeah. Um, we'll try to get that, that up there. Now, I did mention earlier, these at this point in their life, they're not great for eating um, necessarily, or, or they're not, they're not going to be a whole meal if you catch one. But uh, people do love to catch salmon, and that's uh, later on in their life cycle. Uh, as they become adults, believe it or not, there are actually two adult stages, and that's going to be the freshwater adults and then the spawning adults as they come back in. Uh, and that's kind of where people more famously know the salmon as this like bright red. And they've kind of got twisted jaws and that sort of thing. Um, we'll toss up a sketch of them a little later on, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how much they change from being an adult to a spawning adult in their coloration and everything. Their mouth isn't, you know, like um, last week we were drawing some fish. Last week we weren't allowed to use a reference, and honestly, we've kind of cursed ourselves here. We still don't have references other than our fish. Yeah, they yeah. move though. It's hard. <laughs> Their mouth is a, kind of a smaller mouth, though. Um, it's not like a like a big herring mouth or something where they've really got that underbite. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a little bit of a different mouth shape going on. Yeah, the pectoral fins, mm -hmm. uh, those little fins up front, like where they're attached to their their pec muscles, right? Um, those are kind of fun. I'm having a tough time with the shape on those as well. Yeah, they have some that are they're towards the bottom of their body. Yeah. And then they got the pelvic fin, and they have two dorsal fins. Yep. So the dorsal ones are on the top side of their body. Yep. Um, so they have one kind of in the middle of their body, and then one further back towards their tail, or their caudal fin. The dorsal fins, thinking of like another fish, right? If you, you kind of think of the famous way a shark is introduced to a movie. Uh, always with that dorsal fin piercing the top uh, or the water. Um, so our, our little fish here also have kind of a sharky looking dorsal fin. It's really angular. They do, yeah. Which is interesting. Very fish. triangular. Fish like this. And they got a little fin on the bottom to balance them out. At this point they do kind of look like miniature salmon outside of uh, that tail, like we were saying. The tail's a little strange still. Yeah. And then they don't quite keep this banding as they go through no, their lives. No, yeah, they, they lose that. And of course, when we're catching them uh, for food as they're coming up the river, um, they also end up looking a little different. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a question on the YouTube of, uh, how long are salmon staying out at sea before they come back uh, as adults, right? It, it, it can vary species to species, um, but at least a year is what you're looking at. Some, some salmon are out there two, three years, um, some a bit longer, and so it really depends on the species. Now, the thing is, is they don't then return to the ocean. Um, but we do actually have uh, a fish here that also does the, um, the freshwater to saltwater, back to freshwater, and it can do it yeah. multiple times, I believe, and that is the Dolly Varden. Uh, which also looks very much like a salmon, salmonoid type fish. Um, and so uh, they, they go out, they spend some time out there, they come back, they reproduce, and they can actually cycle again. They don't just reproduce once like a salmon does. Um, but a couple years, uh, shorter or longer based on the species. And of course, when they're coming back home, they're actually trying to uh, return to where they were born. 
And it might be, like we just said, years since they were anywhere near where they were born. So finding their way back, they've got a couple tools. Uh, one of their uh, means of navigation is uh, a sense of magnetism. They almost have an inbuilt compass where they can feel Earth's magnetic field. So they can use that to kind of get close to the mouth of that river, perhaps. But as you're going up a river, there's forks in that river. And so you have to be like, well, which fork gets me home? And they actually have a, almost a sense of smell. Um, we might think of it closer as a sense of taste. Um, but they, they are basically going and testing out the water on one side and testing out the water on the other. And they're trying to say, which one kind of smells right? And you might think, you're like, Alex, you're crazy. Water doesn't smell. Um, but it, it does. You know, if, if you think of tea, maybe you're a tea drinker. I like tea. Um, or even like coffee, yeah. right? If someone just put in front of me a cold cup of coffee or tea and a cold cup of water, I could tell which is which just by smell, right? If I was blindfolded. And all you're really doing to make coffee or tea is you're running water through crushed up leaves or ground up uh, like loam, basically, right? Yeah. Cr crushed up beans and seeds. And if you think about a river, if you imagine a river where there's pine trees all around that river and a river with no pine trees, the one that has pine needles falling in it all year, I would argue that water's probably going to smell a little pinier. And it might, it's certainly probably going to taste a little different. And so salmon can uh, pick up these small differences in water. Everything from the, the soils, uh, the plants, the animals living near that water, the animals living in the water, the animals using the bathroom close to that water, all of that would change the makeup of that water. So salmon are pretty perceptive to that. And fish in general uh, tend to have a pretty good sense of smell when you talk about like sharks, again, being able to sense yeah. blood from far away. So, All right, how are we? I'm pretty much good. Oh, I forgot the, 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 the lines, the, the little par bars there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to slap those on mine, but if you want to show off yours. Sure, yeah. So this is kind of what I have right now, so we'll get it underneath our document camera all set up right here. But yeah, so I got some eggs in there and some eyed eggs and then we're moving on to the alvin. So there's my little yolk pouch on the bottom of my alvin there. And then we got a fry. So like our little juvenile salmon with those banding patterns. So those are your first three stages of your salmon's life cycle. From there, it'll move on and go through a couple other stages to be that breeding adult. But this is kind of what they look like at the beginning of their lives. Yeah, I'm going to slap mine up there, I guess. Awesome, yeah, go for it. Uh, so I, I've slapped my drawing up there. Um, and we've also got a question of when do salmon start running through Res Bay? Gosh, I could not tell you the earliest time. But again, because we have five types, what's kind of nice is there's like a season for it um, in that the one, one species will run through and then another species can run through and another species can run through. And here in uh, Seward, Seward, Alaska, which of course we have Resurrection Bay, um, we actually have a silver salmon derby that takes place. And uh, it's kind of interesting year in, year out. Um, because they'll go out at the beginning of the derby. They'll actually go out on boats because those salmon haven't made it to the water yet. Uh, and some years the salmon will run kind of deep and the boats don't get a lot. The derby's kind of meh. But that means that when they do get to shore, uh, the, the, the anglers that are actually going from shore there are trying to catch fish, there's a lot more for them. Um, whereas if the boat season's really successful, sometimes there's not a, a great amount of salmon as they're coming to shore. So throughout the summer is when they're, they're kind of returning. Um, but yeah, uh, I've slapped my picture up there. I was going to say, right before that question, adding a little shading to your fish, even just a little, makes it seem better. Yeah, it <laughs> helps a lot. Like especially. before, it's just a little outline fish. It looks yeah. not great. Um, and mine, you know, still not wonderful, but no, even just adding great. a little bit of like that counter shading, like you're talking about, darker on top, lighter on the bottom. Um, and of course, I've got my eggs and my eyed eggs over there as well. Now, you did do one that has the rest of the, the life cycle. Yeah, so I did this one a little bit ago. Um, and this has the rest of our life cycle in there. So um, we can see if it, that from a fry, they then go to be a par, which look a lot like a fry. They're just a little bit bigger. And then they go to being a smolt. 
and then an adult and then a spawning adult. So I don't have mine colored, but from adult to spawning adult is kind of when they change coloration a lot. Yeah. So they might go from being sort of silvery to that red, like that deep red color and then kind of more of a green face at some point. Yeah. Um, and then they get those really weird, like hooked teeth. Yeah, almost. yeah, their jaw kind of like yeah. it's hooked and everything and their teeth get really nasty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite fact, I think, about salmon is, of course, when they, when they are fry, they're par, then they go out to the, um, the, the fresh water, or excuse me, they go from fresh water to salt water. Their body starts undergoing changes to uh, develop into, into a salt water fish, and they become a smolt, but the process by which they go from fry to smolt is actually called smoltification. <laughs> that is the name of that process, which is just the most made up word. Uh, but it's real, right? Like it just, it sounds so fake. So smultification. Um, but like, like Haley mentioned, we didn't color ours in. If you've been following along, uh, you know, feel free to slap some color in there yeah. and definitely share them. If you are drawing fish with us on these Sunday fish sketches, um, and we're, we're hoping to do these every week, uh, try and follow along and draw a fish of your own. You can draw what we're drawing. You can draw your own and uh, share that on Twitter with the hashtag Sunday fish sketch. Uh, and also slap the hashtag Telequarium on there um, so that we know who followed along with us. And uh, other than that, uh, if we have any other questions, we can take those. But I think we're probably just going to sign off for today. Yeah, so, sounds good. Uh, if you want to join us uh, in just two hours' time, well, an hour and a half now, mm. Haley's going to be talking about walrus. You want to give us like a little preview? What are we, what are we doing? Yeah, so we're going to talk about walrus. We're going to talk about how they're adapted to live in the Arctic in those really cold temperatures. And we're also going to be talking a little bit about our wildlife response team that we have here and how they actually rescued a walrus a little while back. Perfect. So that's, uh, again, just about an hour and a half, 2 o'clock Alaska time, 3 o'clock Pacific time over on our YouTube channel. So those of you that are watching on Facebook, thanks so much for watching us. But if you <laughs> want to get even more, if you want to catch that Walrus program, head on over to our YouTube channel for uh, our two-a-day Teleaquarium programs uh, live from the Alaska Sea Life Center, bringing the aquarium to you uh, over the vastness of the internet. But we'll just leave you uh, with our fry up here for a couple more seconds, and then we'll say so long. <laughs>